Terry Dual Essendon Premiership skipper Terry Danaher would reach his 300th game against Carlton at the age of 34. He'd play on. David Cloak finished after 333 games. He did so with a bang, eight goals against Carlton. Others would go. Colin Kinnear stood down as coach at Sydney. Kevin Bartlett would not be treated as kindly. The 403 game Tiger legend faced angry fans after humiliating losses and was finally sacked. The bitterness still lingers. He would be replaced by Alan Jeans. As the final six swung into gear, Melbourne, with Djakovic still kicking bags of goals, accounted for Essendon in a fiery encounter at Waverley. St Kilda, under coach Ken Sheldon, had made the finals for the first time since 1973. Lockett at one end, kicking nine goals in his finals debut. Brownless at the other, kicking eight and steering Geelong to victory. Ablett would be reported and miss the rest of Geelong's finals campaign. For the first time, a final was played outside Melbourne. Subiaco hosted the qualifying final and in one of the great surprises, Hawthorne upset the raging favourites from the West. The Hawks would advance to the grand final, beating Geelong in the second semi-final. Their opponents would be the West Coast Eagles in a grand final for the first time after accounting for Melbourne and Geelong along the way. If 1991 was a year of change, the greatest revelation would come when Irishman Jimmy Steins, the 25-year-old Melbourne Ruckman, won the Brownlow medal and just about every other award going to. Seven years earlier, he'd never heard of the game. I still get back to the Jim Steins story, you know, winning a Brownlow medal, uh, a lad from Ireland. I think that's as unique as the game can ever get. The grand final was different too. It was played at Waverley, while the Great Southern Stand was under construction at the MCG, and a man named Angry Anderson wowed the crowd in his Batmobile. Yes, it was different. But some things never change. For the eighth time in nine years, Hawthorne played off in the grand final. But one sensed it was the end of an era. Not one of the Hawks made the All-Australian team. Under Alan Joyce, Hawthorne would survive a 15-minute onslaught and then turn the game their way. Michael Tuck would accept the cup. It would be his last appearance as a player in game number 426 in grand final number 11. He had rewritten the record books. His longevity stunned everyone. Finishing up two would be the Dipper and John Kennedy Jr. It was certainly the end of an era. There would be a tragic postscript to the season. On the morning of October 11, Darren Mullane lost control of his car hit a truck and was killed. The 1990 Collingwood Premiership hero was killed in his prime and thousands mourned his passing. Well, I don't know, I was one of the slowest blokes around, but I know it got really quick from the 80s to the 90s. The game was uh, getting quicker all the time and I, I think the slow halfback flanker late in the 80s sort of he deteriorated into the 90s as the game if you couldn't run pretty quick and play forward or back all in one, you, you, you weren't played. So I think that's where it's changed. You've got to be pretty versatile now and, and run pretty quick. The AFL were quick to honour Michael Tuck. Just months after his retirement, he presented his old teammate, Paul Hudson, with the first Tuck medal, as best on ground in the 1992 Foster's Cup Grand Final. Tuck might have retired, but his beloved Hawthorne continued to add to that trophy cabinet at Glen Ferry. Back-to-back -back night premierships, this time over Fitzroy. It was a strange pre-season. Adelaide coach Graham Corns went for novelty. Nigel Smart went for the doctor after walking on red-hot coals. Mind over matter is one thing, blisters another. The heat was on Greg Williams too. The AFL investigated his transfer from Sydney to Carlton and found irregularities. The fastest hands in football were sidelined for six matches. The Swans fined $50,000 with half suspended and Williams $25,000.
Portsmouth moved to Waverley and unfurled another Premiership pennant, the club's ninth in 30 years. They had found Glen Ferry too small and Princess Park unattractive to their support base. In the opening round of the season, and for the second time against Geelong in three years, Jason Dunstall kicked a record equaling 12 goals. The next day, St Kilda ended a run of 20 outs over 12 years against Essendon. Tony Lockett putting his grip on the match with seven goals. A newcomer for Essendon that day was James Hurd, into the side as a last-minute replacement for Terry Danaher. Craig Kelly was one of Collingwood's best as the Magpies made it two in a row with a win over Sydney. The big Blake would miss the next five weeks after knocking out Ben Doolan's front teeth. And it's a free kick relayed down the ground. There's a bit of a wrestle going on behind the play. As the Brisbane had recruited Daryl White from Alice Springs. He would be an excitement machine for years to come. A short little pass. May have been better to go longer, but he's followed it up. Picked it up now. Eluded one player. Shoots in towards goal. And in game number 100, Nicky Winmar returned to Perth. Flying first class, of course. Gary Ablett took his genius to Perth for the weekend, and in a remarkable second quarter, Geelong kicked 11 goals. It would be the Eagles' third defeat at home in 26 games. One of the strangest games of the 90s, round six. Essendon and Melbourne at the MCG. The Demons 47 points up in the last quarter and still managed to lose. Tony Lockett's love affair with Adelaide continued. His 10 against the Crows took his tally to 32 in three games. But Big Plugger took the back seat this day. At Waverley, Jason Dunstall kicked 17 goals from 25 kicks and 18 marks. He had five misses, any one of which could have given him a share of the all-time goal-kicking record of 18 held for 45 years by Fred Fanning. Believe it or not, even Jason was to be overshadowed by Geelong. Against a pitifully weak Brisbane, the Cats accumulated 37 goals, 17, 239 to set a new AFL scoring record. Ablett led the charge with nine. Geelong kicked 14 goals in the last quarter alone. The Bears lost by 164 points. While fewer than 8,000 had seen that debacle, more than 83,000 would attend the game dubbed the Match of the Century on Thursday, May the 7th. 100 years after the Magpies had been formed, it was seen fit to pit them against their most traditional rivals. Oh, Francis rides a heavy bump. That was heavy. As has so often been the case, Carlton spoiled the party. Greg Williams had restarted his career as a blue, but it would be Stephen Kernahan with seven, emerging as the main party pooper. It's very, very long, and there is the quick reply. For the second week in a row, Geelong would top 30 goals, this time Adelaide on the receiving end of a 123-point thrashing. Again, Ablett outstanding. The West Coast was making a move after travelling to Tasmania and copping a beating from Fitzroy, and having their eyes opened by this goal from Doc Wheelton. They met Footscray, the top side on the ladder. An opening quarter, eight goals to nil, and seven goals from Brett Hetty had fired Malthouse's men. A big crowd, and an even better performance by James Manson had the crowd hollering at Waverley. That is a brilliant mark, isn't it, Pete? He's been good. He's playing at centre-half forward, Manson. And he's hurt himself, James, I think. He's not. He's in a bit of pain there. There's a pretty, Jimmy. pretty face for you. <laughs> And maybe a tactic there, they may not want him to have that shot at goal from the fourth <laughs> pocket. <laughs> it could be a set play. Well, well Ron McEwen took the kick. Inside the last minute, but that could be a tragedy for Collingwood at the same time. Let's watch McEwen. No. Yes, he snuck it back. He's brought it back for a goal. Manson miraculously came good. An extraordinary recovery. <laughs> oh, no wonder the umpire was suspicious about that one. Listen to the who. And just went abuse there. The 60,000 saw a quality game and a classy performance from Peter Dacos, who would emerge as Collingwood's match winner. There would be the break for interstate duties, Western Australia visiting Melbourne and carrying on a losing tradition that has lasted 98 years. 
St Kilda teammates Lockett and Lowe stole the show. Plugger kicked five goals. Lowe took 16 marks and the Witten medal as best on ground. Shrugs two tackles. Kicks high. Has kicked a miraculous goal. What a start by the big lead. Trial by video continued to work as an active deterrent. In round 11, Hawthorne's Paul Deere would be suspended for four games for breaking Peter Foster's leg in this tripping incident. One of the worst captured.